we want to do is to refocus attention on Al Qaeda. We are going to uh, root out their networks, their bases. Uh, we are going to make sure that they cannot attack U.S. citizens, U.S. soil, U.S. interests, and our allies' interests around the world. In order for us to do that, we have to ensure that neither Afghanistan nor Pakistan can serve as a safe haven for Al Qaeda. Washington, we got a problem. Why do you need a surge of 17,000 troops deployed against the Taliban in the poppy growing province of Helmand in the south and not in the east and southeast in Afghanistan? Plus, 4,000 advisors to train the Afghan army. If you actually need to fight no more than 200 or 300 Al Qaeda roaming in Afghanistan, plus another 400 maximum in the Pakistani tribal areas. And by the way, they're not Afghans. They're mostly Arabs with a few Uzbeks, Chechens, and Uyghurs thrown in. Anyway, the puppet in Kabul, he loved Obama's plan to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat Al Qaeda and the Taliban. Especially because it involves the improbable hunt for the good Taliban, mixed with special ops inside Pakistan. The puppet in Islamabad, well, uh, he loved it too, but his foreign office diplomats definitely didn't. AFPAC has got to be 2009's prime theater of the absurd. It took the New York Times and the usual American officials something like 13 years to discover that the Pakistani ISI, their CIA, helps the Taliban. And this, while the CIA, alongside with the ISI pals, they are compiling a mega hit list in the Pashtun tribal areas inside Pakistan. So uh, maybe this is what CENTCOM Supremo General David Petraeus means by trilateral love affair. It's also important that this be trilateral. And in fact, as, as Richard uh, explains frequently, uh, the intelligence services of these two countries, which have had quite a bit of enmity between them, they also have to cooperate, and we're going to work together, all of us, to try to foster that cooperation as well. The Pentagon Petrel's preferred pal is Pakistani Army's Chief General Ashfaq Kiyani. He loved what is not in Obama's presentation of the surge, the drone war over Pashtun lands. As for the Pakistani people who have no say in all of this, they see it as a charade and Al-Qaeda as a threat to the U.S. and not to Pakistan. What we want to do is say to the Pakistani people, uh, you are our friends, you are our allies. We are going to give you the tools to defeat Al-Qaeda and to root out these safe havens. But we also expect some accountability. Uh, and we expect that you understand the severity and the nature of the threat. In addition, what we want to do is to help Pakistan grow its economy, to be able to provide basic services to its people, uh, and that, I think, will help strengthen those efforts. If the Pakistan government doesn't have credibility, if they are weakened, then it's going to be much more difficult for them to deal with uh, the extremism within their borders. So Obama is selling all this basically as nation building based on trust. But the U.S. cannot trust the ISI and the Pakistani government, while the Pakistani people, they cannot trust the U.S. Now, take a look at this manual, prepared by the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, TRADOC, one more wonderful Pentagon acronym for us to memorize. It's all spelled out. This is a U.S. war against, yes, Pashtuns, who are funded by drug smuggling and U.S. allies in the Gulf. They don't say that, but they are U.S. allies in the Gulf, who are trained and assisted by, yes, the ISI, with some, in fact, marginal Al-Qaeda assistance. Al-Qaeda is a detail here. The Americans don't understand that Al-Qaeda, they have a pan-Islamic agenda, while the various groups we call the Taliban are in a war against foreign occupation. On page 10... They finally admit that Karzai and Kabul is supported by a lot of warlord militias involved in crime, narco-trafficking, and smuggling. The key thing here is not terrorism. It's the control over the very, very lucrative poppy herring manufacturing and smuggling routes. Then, there's this stark admission by a former Taliban that they are not the real enemy. If Kabul was not so corrupt, and capable of providing security for ordinary Afghans, most Pashtuns would not even be Taliban. 
And no wonder the Obama administration, they would love to get rid of Hamid Karzai. So this is not exactly about terrorists, is it? In Asia, they know it. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, which groups China, Russia, and the stands of Central Asia. They're all neighbors of Afghanistan. They met in Moscow last week to discuss Afghanistan ahead of the NATO meeting in The Hague this week, privileged by the U.S. And this is how Asia sees it. And that's one of the key issues that are absolutely taboo for Obama to touch upon. They don't want U.S. military bases in Central Asia. And no wonder Iran, which is currently observer and so a full member, said the SCO is the way to solve the whole mess in Afghanistan and not NATO. At least 40% of Afghans, they are either Shiites or they speak Dari, which is a Persian language. So the ties with Iran are very, very close. Well, at least Holbrook admits it. The door is open for Iran to participate in international efforts to stabilize Afghanistan. Those must involve all the neighbors, including India, China, Russia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, plus our NATO allies. And if Holbrook is clever, he should immediately buy dinner for legendary Mujahid Ismail Khan, the Lion of Herat. <laughs> Naturally, if there was friendship between Iran and America, it will not only benefit these two countries, it will help the region and very directly affect Afghanistan. Did Obama's strategic reviewers read this report? Well, apparently not. It states, and I quote, The mere presence of foreign soldiers fighting a war in Afghanistan is probably the single most important factor in the resurgence of the Taliban. So would you buy a used car, I'm sorry, war, from people like Mullen, uh, Petraeus, McKiernan, well, former CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who's seen them all since Kennedy, he wouldn't. They resemble all too closely the gutless general officers who never looked down at what was really happening in Vietnam. The Joint Chiefs of Staff of the time have been called, not without reason, a sewer of deceit. So what if this has nothing to do with terrorists, but number one, Cold War mentality in action, a Vietnam-style surge, expanding the war, then to Cambodia and now to Pakistan. The US empire of bases, close surveillance of Russia and China, and to block Russia from a route to the Middle East via Pakistan. And last but not least, the energy wars. And this is what it's all about. I'll show you here in my non-digital, non-CNN magic map. Look, this is the 7.6 billion Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India pipeline, the TAPI pipeline. It goes from here, Turkmenistan, crosses Herat to the east of Herat, that's where Ismail Khan's territory is, crosses this very, very long Taliban-controlled area in the Helm and the Nirmuruz provinces, crosses Baluchistan in Pakistan and goes to the Pakistani port of Gwadar in the Arabian Sea. So is FPAC the Pentagon's AIG? Bail them out. Don't let them fail. Will it be Obama's Vietnam? Whatever it is, it's not about terrorists. Not really. Follow the money. Follow the energy. Follow the map. There are times when reality just asserts itself. In spite of the haze created by television news and entertainment, sometimes crisis rips a tear in the fabric of myth and propaganda. Now a profound economic crisis has ripped asunder the American dream itself. Millions of people losing jobs and homes. They lack proper health care and any real sense of security. Since 2001, workers' wages have fallen and remain stagnant, even though worker productivity has risen almost 33%. By 2006, the top 1% of households were receiving 23% of all pre-tax income, more than double what it was in the 1970s. It's the greatest concentration of income since 1928. As unemployment rises, we need to know why this crisis is happening and what we can do to defend ourselves. Why are wages so low? Why is the society so laden with debt? 
Is it in ordinary Americans' interest to have a trillion dollar military budget to project power across the globe? Corporate television news won't ask these questions, let alone try to find answers. Only a truly independent news network can tackle these questions with courage and with ordinary people's interests in mind. We need a news network that's independent of corporations, governments, and political parties. We need the real news. But there won't be a real news network unless we raise substantial funds right away. The current financial crisis has hit our funding hard. Together, we do have the power to turn it around. There are already hundreds of thousands of people watching the real news every month. If everyone pitches in, we can build an internet and cable television network that will change the face of media forever. You can organize house parties, talk to friends at school and at work, send email blasts and spread the word. Distribute this video to everyone you know. Pick up the phone and call a few friends and suggest they visit therealnews.com. Invest just 10 minutes a day to ask friends and colleagues to join the campaign to create a truly independent source of internet and television news. Together, we can build this network. Just 50,000 people at $10 a month gets us to our first level of sustainability. You can help us reach this goal, and when we do, we'll move to television in millions of homes across North America. Help us reach an audience in the millions. Please contribute generously. Spread the word. Let's make the Real News Television Network a reality. Your tax-deductible donation makes it possible. Please contribute at therealnews.com.